Wikipedia und war ganz erstaunt, dass also schon seit den 60er Jahren, also schon 50 Jahre, gibt es dieses Thema Borden. Also ich glaube, da kann man gar nicht jetzt von der Sportart reden, sondern es ist eine etablierte Sportart. Einerseits, andererseits habe ich auch gelesen, dass eigentlich Skateboarden gar keine Sportart ist, sondern das ist eine Art zu leben, also eigentlich viel mehr als Sport. Insofern denke ich, ist es eigentlich auch ganz wichtig, dass wir, wenn es eine Art zu leben ist, in unserer Gesellschaft Orte in einer Stadt finden, wo es auch möglich ist. Und ähm, wir wissen natürlich alle, wenn wir diese Anlagen schon, schon mal gesehen haben, dass sie natürlich in unserer Städte schon ähm, vom Eindruck verändern können, ähm, im positiven, vielleicht auch im negativen Sinne. Wenn wir kennen die Befürchtungen in der Nachbarn, aber da ist es immer wahnsinnig laut, da haben wir wahnsinnig laute Musik laufen und so. Ähm, das sind natürlich äh, Sachen, die man einfach mit reinnehmen muss in so eine Planung, mit der man umgehen muss. Und ich bin mal ganz gespannt. Was jetzt heute Abend dieser Vortrag bringt, ich finde es eine spannende Diskussion und ich wünsche mir, dass wir mal in dem Hochforum öfters solche Diskussionen, solche Veranstaltungen haben, die einfach auch zu unseren sozusagen Horizont hinausgehen. In diesem Sinne, alle nochmal herzlich willkommen, wie wir heute den Hochforum heute heute. Ja, dann darf ich Sie alle recht herzlich begrüßen, auch im Namen von Statement. Mein Name ist Sebastian Müller. Ich werde Sie heute Abend ein bisschen durch den Abend führen und ich werde auch übersetzen, wenn der Herr Borden auf Englisch spricht. Wir hoffen, dass es vom Englischen her verständlich sein wird. Er hat mir auch seinen Vortrag hier schon zum Teil geschickt und wir haben da schon vorgearbeitet, von daher dürfte das alles gehen. Ich darf also zunächst noch dem Matthias Bergdorf kurz das Wort erteilen. Also vielleicht ganz kurz, wir sind über das Geld mehr und das Geld mit dieser Initiative, die sich schon seit mehreren Jahren in den Mitgliedern in Freiburg gleich neue und spannende Möglichkeiten hat, diesen Sportsektor zu erlangen. Und die Freiburg ist aber nicht. Zunächst mal möchte ich noch uns gerne bedanken, dass wir uns auf den Vorfahren kommen dürfen. Es ist für uns mal die Möglichkeit, mal ganz gut mit ihm anzusprechen. Also mit diesem Thema, ich glaube, kann sich wirklich vorstellen, erreicht man heute da die Jugendliche und äh, in der Regel finden dann Veranstaltungen, bei denen man über so das Thema dann später in den Jugendhaus zum Beispiel statt, wie auf dem Freiburg Jensens Haus der Jugend zum Beispiel. Ähm, Skateboard fahren, das ist natürlich, was hat es jetzt mit der Architektur denn auch zu tun? Es wurde schon angedeutet, gerade in der Vorrede, und ähm, das ist ein Thema, was Städtebau und Architektur berührt, weil es immer im Kontext der Bauten in den Stadt findet. Also das gibt es auch erst seit ich Städten, die Sachen, die wir eben auf Rollen setzen, einfach bestimmte Materialien voraus, bestimmte Strukturen, damit man mit denen nachgehen kann. Und äh, da braucht man die Leute die Welt. Skateboarder haben einen anderen Blick auf, auf die Räume einer Stadt, auf die Gebäude und manchmal auch sogar auf kleine Details der Architektur. Und ähm, Skateboarder versuchen ständig, im Grunde diesen städtischen Raum neu zu lesen, neu abzuscannen, äh, zu interpretieren. Und damit ähm, nehmen sie praktisch eine neue Perspektive auf den öffentlichen Raum in der Stadt ein. Es geht darum, wo kann man, wo kann man eine gute Leinfahrt, eine gute Tiere, wo kann man sich zusammenhängen bewegen mit dem städtischen Raum. Da gewinnen dann die Skateboard einen Blick dafür wieder Zeit. Und äh, diese Perspektive sollen sie dort zum Teil mal kennenlernen. Auch aus dem aktuellen Anlass, ähm, dass die Stadt wieder nachdenkt, auf dem Kreisplatz einen Skateboard zu installieren. Sie haben vielleicht die Presse verfolgt in der letzten Zeit, das war immer mal angedeutet oder Thema auf jeden Fall. Und ähm, die Szene freut sich über sowas natürlich, wenn sowas mal in den Platz und ähm, auch gerade im innerstädtischen Bereich. Äh, wir sind der Stadt dankbar, dass sie eine solche Anlage nicht unbedingt an den Rand schieben möchte, sondern wir müssen auch mal sagen, nein, sowas soll auch Platz haben in einem Stadt. Wenn man jetzt mal an so eine Skate-Anlage denkt, das ist Ihnen vielleicht zunächst auch mal fremd, ähm, dann denken Sie aber bitte nicht an das, was man aber auf den Städten spielt, weil es nicht kennt, was man da nicht, was in der Hoch zusammengestellte Anlagen findet, wo eins mehr schlecht als halt sich anpasst, sondern was äh, wir uns vorstellen, was wir als Platz auch größer als angedacht, das ist eine organische Struktur, ein organisches Skatepark. Und 
Und äh, Sie liegen nicht ganz falsch, wenn Sie jetzt bei äh, Stichwort organisch vielleicht sogar an jene denken, die die Architektur von Oskar Niemeyer plötzlich verstorben ist, äh, zumindest in seiner verrichteten Spur. Also es geht darum, dass man äh, gute fahrbare Strukturen installiert und äh, das müssen nicht auf den Kanten sein, sondern müssen auch oft in irgendwelchen Formen, die auch attraktiv sind, einfach umzustatten beispielsweise. Und das ist ein Argument, so was auch mal ganz ein bisschen Platz installiert. Es geht auch um die Frage, ob die Menschen die Gründen brettern, die auch zu dem beitragen können, was praktisch die Qualität des städtischen Ausmacht. Und ähm, im Grunde, ja, was ist das, was man damit am städtischen Haus? Es ist sicherlich das Zusammentreffen verschiedener Menschen, die sich dort begegnen. Vielleicht auch begegnen, ohne den Gedanken des Kommerzes unterworfen zu sein. Also heute herrschen sie dann vor, wenn man die Stadt betritt, wenn man die Stadt in die Stadt hineingeht. Und, ähm, aber das Recht und Gegenteil von Menschen bringt das jetzt auch voraus, dass man die Möglichkeiten hat, zu den Menschen zu machen, 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 der Aaron wird noch kurz was sagen zum Skateboardfahren an sich. Ganz kurz, damit Sie so ein bisschen den Background haben und dann schalten wir aber sehr schnell in den Vortrag von den Worten. Vielen Dank. Ja, ich darf Sie auch recht herzlich begrüßen äh, zu dem Vortrag von Herrn Born, auf den ich auch selbst unheimlich spannend bin, weil es einfach eine andere Perspektive zeigt. Also wir jetzt als Skater, die wir schon ein paar Jahre darauf gehen, ich glaube, wie der Matthias gesagt hat, wir haben eben schon eine bestimmte Perspektive. Und, ähm, aber das was von jemandem zu sehen, der, der beide Welten kennt, ja, der, der selber Erfahrungen auf dem Brett hat und das quasi, ähm, eine, aber, aber von, von ihrem Fach, wenn wir das hier in der Architektur kann man sehen, ähm, kommt. Das ist für uns selbst auch unheimlich interessant, weil das uns theoretisch in der Diskussion mit, mit einer Stadt natürlich auch unglaublich gute Argumente liefern kann. Ähm, zum Skaten an sich, nur grob. Holzbrett, wie es da hängt, mit Achsen und Rollen unten dran, mit dem versuchen wir auf einem möglichst guten Belag durch die Stadt äh, Rollen fortzubewegen. So hat sich das entwickelt, aus dem Surfen raus. Ähm, und mittlerweile kommen da eben Tricks äh, zu. Man hat sich dann irgendwann in die Swimmingpools reingeschlichen. Das ist jetzt kein gebräuchlicher, sondern ein extra gebauter Swimmingpool. Ähm, und hat sich damit quasi versucht, einfach mit bestimmten Tricks, es gibt dann bestimmte Manöver, die man machen kann, auf Landsteine hoch, runter, etc. Ähm, sich damit im städtischen Umfeld erstmal zu bewegen. Denn nicht jeder hat wie in Kalifornien in jedem Haus in einem irgendwo so einen stehenden Pool. Ähm, deswegen, das ist einfach die Straße, die Stadt ist seit jeher ein Teil von Skateboarden. Und, ähm, es gibt auch immer Parks, aber es wird auch immer Skater geben, ähm, die versuchen werden, das städtische Umfeld zu nutzen. Und es gibt jetzt ganz viele Ansätze, die einfach ähm, dahin gehen, sich orientieren einen Skatepark nicht mehr im klassischen, im klassischen Sinne zu bauen, ähm, sondern quasi ein urbanes, gesichertes Umfeld für Skaten. Also das sieht dann vielleicht auf den ersten Blick gar nicht aus wie der typische Skatepark mit so einer Rampe und so, so einer Stange da, sondern das sieht dann aus wie einfach ein schöner Platz, den man dann aber nutzen kann. Und deswegen bin ich sehr, sehr... I'm with you, I'm with you, Sebastian. Good evening. Okay, okay. Right. Um, well, thank you, thank you very much for um, to Sebastian and everyone for inviting me to talk. Um, my apologies for speaking to you in English. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not being with you in Freiburg this evening, but at least I can be with you uh, digitally, if not um, if not physically. So um, let's uh, let's see how this goes. Um, and Sebastian, I think you're going to do a, a translation into German as we go along. Is that right? Speaking to you in English. Um, my apologies for not being with you in Freiburg this evening, but at least okay. I can be with you uh, digitally, okay. if not. All right. can, um, can I have the, um, the first so, image, uh, please? I think I've got a different uh, image up on the screen at the moment. Yeah, um, brilliant. And so Thank you. I think we're going to do a um, translation in I want German to as we go along. I start right? this talk with a, with a general question, which is basically that we, we live in an age of shopping malls, of McDonald's okay. and Benetton at every, uh, okay. on every high right. street. Can I have the, um, um, the and in an age of modified leisure and pleasure. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I want to start 
start this talk with a with a general question, which is basically that we, we live in an age of shopping malls, of McDonald's and Benetton at every uh, on every high street. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and in an age of commodified leisure and pleasure. we also live in an age when our our streets and our public spaces are con uh, increasingly under surveillance and all manner of reg regulation. In einem Zeitalter der handelbar gemachten Freizeiten und Vergnügungen. Uh, next slide, please. So where then can we find practices and spaces which are less docile, less passive, more creative in their engagement with cities? Under surveillance and all manner of reg regulations. Wir leben auch in einem Zeitalter, in dem unsere Straßen und öffentlichen Plätze zunehmend uh, unter Überwachung please. stehen und alle Arten von Regeln unterbrochen. One of the key inspirations for me has been this gentleman, who was on the fair, the French Marxist philosopher who died in 1991. Wo können wir also Praktiken und Räume finden, in die, die weniger zahm sind, weniger passiv und kreativer in ihrem Umgang mit der Stadt? Next slide. Uh, Lefebvre, I think it's fair to say, had two one of really big ideas, and the first one concerns uh, space. Lefebvre, space for Lefebvre is, is a social production. Für mich war eine der Schlüsselinspirationen die Arbeiten von Henri Lefebvre, einem französischen marxistischen Philosophen, der 1991 gestorben ist. Um, he argues in his book, La Production de l'Espace, that, that space really is not ideas, given to us by God, but is space. produced by space and productive of people. In short, we make space production. and space makes us. Uh, Lefebvre had, so I think, two big ideas. First, war das Raum eine soziale Konstruktion ist. Um, he argues in his book La Production de l'Espace that space is not That's given right. to us by God. Lefebvre's second big idea was about everyday life, la vie quotidienne. Um, and and he recognized the importance of everyday experiences for urban dwellers. Sondern es wird produziert durch unser soziales Miteinander. Kurzum, Raum macht uns und wir machen Raum. Next slide, please. And as we see here, on one level, um, go back to that side. Everyday yeah. life. As we see here, everyday life is the increasing domination on the part of capitalism, the space of routines or boredom. For urban dwellers. Zweitens, das tägliche Leben. Neben dem Konzept des sozialen Raums ist das der andere große Beitrag des Fevres zum Denken über Städte und die täglichen Erfahrungen der Stadtbewohner. And as we see here, on one level, um, go back one side, please. Yeah. As we see here, everyday life is the increasing domination on the part of capitalism, the space of routines or order. But also, as we see in this slide, which is a picture of um, Reclaim the Streets activists in London, everyday life is all that is truly lived in people's lives. Also, wie wir hier sehen, ist das tägliche Leben ähm, einer immer stärkeren Dominanz des Kapitalismus unterworfen, des Orts und der Zeit, der Routinen, der Langeweile, der Wiederholungen a place of und der Mangel of an love, of protest, of actions. But also, as we see in this slide, which is a picture of um, Reclaim the Streets activists in London. Next slide, Everyday please. life is all that is truly lived so in, in people's lives. architectural terms, or in urban terms, what becomes important is not just grand monuments, like we see at the Olympics in Munich some uh, 40 years ago. It's a place of pleasures, of love, of protest, of actions. Das ist ein Platz der Liebe, der Proteste, des täglichen Lebens. Um, yeah. uh, next slide. Next slide, please. But the most normal and everyday in things that people do every day of their lives, their waking thoughts, their desires, everything we do as we go about our, our normal daily practices. Um, uh, 40 years ago. Also, was wir, was wir sehen, sind nicht die großen Monumente, uh, wie wir hier sehen. Bei dem Foto sind die Olympischen Spiele 1970 vor 40 Jahren okay, zu that's, sehen. That's enough, that's enough theory to begin with. Um, let's let's uh, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. But the most normal and everyday things that people do okay. every day of their so lives. Okay, so how do we think about Lefebvre's ideas in relation to cities? And one of the things that I've done is, and I'm interested in, 
is, uh, apart from being a skateboarder myself, is thinking about skateboarding as a Lefebvrean activity in cities today. Okay, that's, that's, enough, that's enough theory to begin with. Um, let's, let's do some skateboarding. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is enough theory. Now we'll do some skateboarding. Okay, so how do we think about Lefebvre's ideas in relation to cities? And um, one of the things that I've done is, and I'm interested in... So is, I think um, I'm interested in skateboarding, skateboarding for itself, because it's wonderful, but also because it shows Lefebvre it's an example of how there are many in hidden in possibilities today. in cities today. Also, wie können wir das jetzt verbinden, Skateboard fahren und die uh, Philosophie von Lefebvre? Um, ich bin ja selbst Skater, also ich jetzt nicht, aber äh, er ist es. Ähm, und äh, uh, next slide, please. Interpret, oder ich interpretiere nun so, äh, a little bit of, dieses a little bit of history, of early history. Um, one of the things that's, that's very obvious about skateboarding so, is the actual skateboard is an incredibly simple piece of equipment. This is a skateboard from the early 1960s. It's an example of how there are many hidden possibilities in cities today. Ich interessiere mich für das Skateboardfahren an sich, weil es einfach eine wunderbare Aktivität ist, aber auch weil es zeigt, welche versteckten Möglichkeiten es in unseren Städten heutzutage gibt. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. But, but what's really amazing is so what can of, be done with the skateboard. Um, um, when we look at early skateboarding in Los Angeles and Southern California in the 1960s and 1970s, we find that skateboarders reimagined the terrains that they could find in that part of the world. That the actual skateboard is a pretty simple piece of technique, as we see here from this skateboard from the 1960s. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> But what's really amazing is what, and what these two skaters are doing is they're essentially um, pretending or imagining that the concrete city is a ocean way. They're turning the city into a kind of surfing um, um, activity. The terrains that they could find in that part of the world. When we also see what the skateboarder in the early 1950s and 60s years did, then it was that they den urbanen Raum, den sie vorgefunden haben, uh, next slide, ähm, neu interpretierten oder And what they did was they traveled all over Los Angeles, all over and California, and tried to find um, spaces like swimming pools, banks, ditches and pipes, is and uh, appropriated them and colonized them for the activity of skateboarding. Surfing, uh, um, activity. Was also diese beiden Skateboarder auf dem Bild machen, ist, dass sie sich vorstellen, dass die Betonstadt eigentlich eine Welle, eine Ozeanwelle ist und sie verwandeln diese Betonstadt in eine Ozeanwelle. Uh, next slide, please. And what they did was they traveled all over Los Angeles, all over California and tried and to find This is a photograph of um, Tony, the famous like skateboarder Tony Alva, uh, Alva uh, performing a frontside aerial in a uh, California a swimming pool around 1978. This is pretty the much the first ever photo photograph of a frontside aerial in a pool. War, durch ganz Los Angeles zu gehen und Plätze wie Parks, Gruben, Swimming Pools und auch diese großen Wasserröhren zu verwenden und diese für sich zu vereinnahmen. Okay, um, I think we can show you a, a first video clip at this stage, which shows some of the early pool skating in California. Yeah, with a frontal side and a swimming pool in California. And this is a photograph of uh, Tony, the famous skateboarder Tony Alva, uh, performing a frontside aerial in a Californian swimming pool around 1970. No, this is pretty much the first ever photograph of a frontside aerial in a pool. Okay, doesn't matter. It's okay. Um, what? Front side air. Okay. Um, Has anyone got a skateboard there? Can they do it? First video clip at this stage, which shows some of the early pool in California. What? Um, uh, what? What? What um, skateboarders like Tony Alva did was they, they redefined the city from a place of suburban homogeneity and comfort um, to one of appropriation, um, but also no, of no, uh, confrontation and conflict. We're just suggesting that someone could actually perform it for a slide. But, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Has anyone got a skateboard there? Can they do it? And we can see some of the conflict here. The if you look wall, at the, the image in front <laughs> on the screen at the moment, there's a security well, guard um, top right, uh, what, what, and he's about what, um, to come down and uh, remove the skateboarders from the, the pipeline that they're skating. From a place of suburban homogeneity and comfort to one of appropriation, but also of uh, confrontation and conflict. Was also diese Skateboarder wie Tony Alva gemacht haben, war, dass sie uh, next slide, please. neu definiert haben von einem Ort der Homogenität, also der Gleichförmigkeit. Okay, a, a, little, a little bit on the early history of uh, skate park design and construction. And I, I know this, uh, this is a topic um, near to your heart, as uh, skateboarders are looking to build a new skate park in, in Freiburg. There's a security guard at the top right. And he's about to come down and uh, remove the skateboarders from the, the pipeline that they're skating in. And, here we see the conflict already. And um, hopefully you will build something a little bit more uh, um, inventive than some of these first skateboard uh, parks, which are which I'll uh, show you in the next couple of images. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, a little, a little there were, the, uh, there were um, uh, around 190 skate parks constructed in America in the mid 1970s, and some of them were were, were very cheap and thrown up very quickly. The one, the last image on the screen was built in about three months from start to finish. And um, hopefully you will build something a little bit more uh, um, inventive than some of these first um, next image, uh, please. parts, which are which are. Uh, and they were very the simple in design. Images. Really, just tried to copy uh, ocean waves. So this is an effectively a concrete wave at a skate park. The skate park was actually there called were, paved there wave were, um, skate park in Florida. Ninety skate parks constructed in America in the mid 1970s, and some of them were. Were, were very cheap and thrown up very quickly. The, work, the last image on the screen was built in about three months from uh, the next start to finish. Um. But then skate park constructors managed uh, started to copy the backyard pools, the kind of pool that we saw Tony Alva in a, um, a few minutes ago. And these are two pools, um, two built skate park pools, both built in the UK in the late 1970s. And they're direct copies of a specific Californian residential swimming pool. skate park in Florida. Und äh, zu Beginn waren das sehr einfache Dinge, nämlich versuchten die Skateparks Wellen aus dem Ozean zu kopieren, wie hier eben am ähm, gekehrte Wellen Skatepark in Florida. Uh, next one. Uh, next then, one. Um, we've missed. Can you go back one image, please? But then skate park constructors managed. Uh, oh, I think I've missed. Uh, the I've missed an image. An image there. Uh, uh, could go for one. Uh, um, a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, and these are two pools, uh, two purpose-built skate park pools, both built in that's the monster, UK isn't it? in the late 1970s. Yeah. Um, what skate park designers also did was they 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 tried to build things um, uh, that were based on swimming pools, but which were much more attuned to the needs of of, of skateboarders. So this is one of the famous pools built in Munster out of preformed concrete sections during the 1980s. Uh, next one. But then um, we missed. Can you go back one image, please? Uh, I think I've missed. Uh, I think I've missed an image there. Uh, go forward. Go forward. Okay. Uh, next um, slide, please. Uh, ah, this, this is the one I wanted to show you. This is a, a very elaborate um, skate park pool built in uh, the Pipeline um, Skate Park in California in 1979. And it's called the Combi Pool because it's a combination of a square pool and a round pool uh, joined together in combination. Much more attuned to the needs of, uh, of skateboarders. So this is one of the famous pools built in Munster out of preformed concrete sections during the 1980s. Das ist einer der bekannten Pools, die in Münster-Westfalen in den 1980er Jahren aus äh, vorgefertigt wurden. This, this is perhaps the most famous piece of uh, skate park construction in history. This is the, uh, the equivalent of the uh, Greek Acropolis in skate park design. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, and this is the one I wanted to show you. This is a, a very elaborate um, skate park tool built in uh, the Pipeline Skate Park in California in 1979. And it's called the combi pool. Yeah, it's please. A combination of a square and um, then and around at the other end of the scale, you get constructions like these: uh, small yeah, backyard uh, wooden uh, ramps. Um, here, one in uh, actually, that's my own backyard uh, ramp um, from the late 1970s, uh, and one I think from near you in Freiburg in Germany. Yeah. This is, this is perhaps the most famous piece of uh, skate park construction in history. This is the, uh, the equivalent of the uh, Greek Acropolis in skate park design. So just uh, next slide, please. Just a, uh, just a skate and if you're Tony Hawk and you're a very wealthy and a very successful uh, American professional um, skateboarder, you build a ramp like this in your own backyard. Um, so next slide. Yeah, please. And um, then yeah, next slide, at the other end of the scale, you get um, instructions like or these. if you're uh, a commercial developer, you build a wooden indoor um, skate park. This is one from a uh, caves beach facility in around, Australia. Um, from the late 1970s. And one, I think, from near you in Freiburg in Germany. And on the other side of the development sieht man eben diese Hinterhoframpen. The upper is, glaube ich, meine eigene aus den 70er Jahren. Uh, next slide. Uh, or if you're an avant-garde uh, artist, um, you build a skateboard-based installation, <coughs> such as this one by, called Free Basin that was and installed in a documentary in uh, Castle well, in about 2010. Uh, American professional skateboarder, you build a ramp like this in your own backyard. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Um, but or if you're if we think about skate park design, it's skate important park not to just think about them as if they are objects in Australia. Oder wenn man ein kommerzieller Entwickler ist, dann kann man sich natürlich auch einen hölzernen. If we think back to Lefebvre's idea that we make space, one of the ways we make space is with our bodies. Next up. Or if you're an avant-garde uh, artist. Um, you build a skateboard-based installation, such as this So the one skateboarder here is making the space outward from their body. In, uh, 2010. Okay, oder wenn man natürlich ein Künstler ist, dann kann man so eine skate-basierte uh, Installation bauen, wie 2000. There is also another center of space here, and that of course is uh, the skateboard. Thing where the space is being produced but by the skater but in relation to done, the skateboard under their foot or in this case not okay. under their foot aber wenn wir über skatepark design nachdenken dann dürfen wir darüber nicht nur denken als ob sie objekte wären if we think back to the first idea that we make space one of the ways we make space is with our uh, next slide please. And then, of course, there is architecture as physical object, which is then being questioned by the skateboarder for its ability to project the skateboarder here in relation to skateboarding. So, this skateboarder here makes the room out of the way and out of the body. Uh, next one, so please. verticals, curves, symmetries, so uh, transitions are brought to life by the skateboard, the skateboard where the space is being produced by the skater, but in relation to the skateboard uh, under next their foot, please. or in this case, not under their foot. Yeah, do we have a video now? No. Okay, it doesn't matter. Go, keep going. Um, this then is what I sometimes call super architectural space. Uh, next slide, please. And then, of course, so this is space which is not static, but which is dynamic. Which, which, is is which is rhythmic and forever being uh, declaimed anew in relation to skateboarding. Und 
von gleicher Bedeutung ist natürlich auch, dass Architektur durch den Skateboarder in Frage gestellt wird. So this is space that is being made forever again, like the way so the music, the, the playing of music, or the uh, uh, speaking of poetry. To life by the skateboarder's action. Vertikalen Kurven, die mit vielen Übergängen werden durch die Aktionen und Handlungen des Skateboarders zum Leben erweckt. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Should be a video. Should be a video. Yeah, do we have a video now? No, no. Now, skateboarding no. is of course okay. not Doesn't purely a bodily activity um, uh, devoid of this social meaning and significance. This is what called super architectural space. Das ist also das, was ich eine Art super architekturalen Raum nenne. So this is space which is not static, and dynamic, very often skaters which is um, which create is a kind of oppositional subculture, uh, um, sometimes almost a complete way of life for themselves, different to the mainstream. So this is space that is being made forever again, like the waves of the sea, the playing of music, uh, next slide, or the uh, um, speaking of poetry. We of course find that today skaters, not always, but very often tend to be young men in their early teens and early twenties. Next slide. Although um, some of us are a little bit older than that. Skateboarding is of course not Purely a bodily activity, uh, like uh, devoid of social meaning and significance. And skaters use, uh, and skateboarding subculture uses different words, different graphics, and different ideologies to reject the more conventional and very world often around. Skaters um, create a kind of oppositional subculture, um, sometimes almost a complete way of life for themselves, different to the mainstream. Next slide, please. And of course, magazines, uh, a famous German magazine here, and more recently, DVDs and internet sites have played a large part in forming uh, this subcultural identity. We of course find that today, skaters not always, but very often tend to be young men in their early teens and early 20s. Skateboardfahrer sind auch heute meist junge Männer in ihrem frühen 20er Jahren. Although um, some of us are a little bit older than that. Most importantly though, skateboarding takes its meanings not from its equipment, its graphics, its magazines, but from its actions. And skaters use, uh, and skateboarding subculture uses different words, different graphics, and different ideologies to reject the And in particular, this is, I think, seen from the emergence of street skateboarding in the 1980s and in the 1990s through to the present day. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, magazines, uh, a famous German Responding magazine to here, the possibilities of everyday architecture, a large part the new of street skateboarding appropriates identity. elements in the urban landscape. Magazine and in letzter Zeit auch DVDs, wie dieses deutsche Magazin, haben einen besonderen, eine besondere Rolle in der Ausprägung dieser Subkultur gespielt. Uh, next slide, please. So even something as banal as a handrail now becomes an object of pleasure Most and energy. Most importantly though, skateboarding takes its meanings not from its equipment, its graphics, its magazines, but from its actions. Aber am wichtigsten ist, dass Skateboarding nicht seine uh, next slide, please. Inhalt oder seinen Sinn von uh, Magazinen And here what we find is Handlungen. skaters create new and in particular city rethinking on the emergence of street as a set of discrete features in the 1980s and the 1990s through to the present day. Und besonders sieht man das am Straßen Skateboarding, das es seit den 1980er und 90er Jahren gibt. Uh, next slide please. Responding to the possibilities of everyday architecture, the new street skateboarding appropriates elements in the urban landscape. And then they, they recompose it, they make it again into a new picture, into a new sequence through their actions and speeds through the city. So even something as banal as a handrail now becomes an object of pleasure and energy. Uh, so, sogar etwas Banales wie ein 
Handlauf oder ein, äh, okay. wird dann ein Objekt der... Uh, go to the next slide, go on to the next slide. Ja, yeah. uh, next slide, please. And here what we find is creators create new edits okay. of the city. Rethinking architecture okay. uh, as a set of what, what this means, of course, features. is that skateboarding uh, is a very uh, different kind of spatial and indeed temporal uh, experience to that produced by many other uh, activities in cities today. Is that so stark abgewichen? Weil ich habe das schöner übersetzt, finde ich. Sie überdenken Architektur als ein Set von einschlägigen Eigenschaften und Elementen und rekomponieren diese durch neue Geschwindigkeiten. In particular, people often think of modern cities as being places and they, predominantly they really have sites they that we engage with by a new seeing. Feature into a new sequence through their actions and speeds through the city. We already translated it before because I read it out from the, the translation I made um, here, so I was a little bit faster than you actually speaking. Okay. Yeah. But what like skateboarding does is it yeah, of course skaters yeah. see, but they also that's, use that's touch, here, hearing, balance, movement, and adrenaline to uh, yeah. touch okay. architecture, okay. Okay. to the, engage uh, with architecture. Okay. Um, what, what this means, of course, is that skateboarding is a very different kind of spatial and indeed temporal uh, experience to that produced by many other uh, next slide, uh, activities in cities today. And significantly, this is a very different compositional process to that of architecture as, for example, architects might consider it. In particular, people often think of modern cities as being places predominantly of sites that we engage with by So the composition is not of writing or of drawing or indeed of any kind of codified theorization but comes from the performance of skateboarding itself. What skateboarding does is it, it of course, skaters see. In short, skaters speak or express themselves not with words but with their bodies and with their actions. To touch architecture, to engage with architecture. Was Skateboardfahrer aber tatsächlich machen ist, dass sie fahren durch Adrenalin, durch sich bewegen. But there's one really important difference between the new skateboarding, street skateboarding, which we see on the right, compared to the old. Skate park skateboarding, which we see on the left. And um, significantly, this is a very different compositional process to that of architecture, as, for example, architects might consider it. And that difference is that the new street skating takes place in public, often in the very centre of town. So the composition is not of writing or of drawing or indeed of any kind of codified theorization, but comes from the performance of skateboarding itself. And this seems to me to be one of, also one of the rights of skateboarding, which is to be to take place in the middle of cities and not to be displaced to its edges. In short, skaters speak or express themselves not with words, but with their What then is the meaning hands. of skateboarding in city centres? If skateboarders speak with their bodies and their actions, what are they saying? Next slide, But there's one really important difference between the new skateboarding, street skateboarding, which we see on the right, compared Next to the old... Sorry. Skate park, skateboarding, Next time, on the um, and I think there are a number of things implicit in what skateboarders say through their actions. And that difference is that the new streets. The first one is that architecture is not just grand buildings produced by architects. The unterschied is that this Straßen skateboard fahren häufig in der Öffentlichkeit stattfindet, häufig eben sogar in den Stadtzentren. So for a skateboarder, this simple brick and this seems to me to be one of also is one of the right architecture. Skateboarding, which is to be to take place in the middle of cities 
and not to be displaced to its edges. Und das erscheint auch eine der, um, slide, der Rechte des Skateboarder zu sein, dass es in der Mitte also ist und nicht an die Ränder abgeschoben wird. We do in our lives. What then is the idea that we should produce things is replaced in skateboarding with the idea that we should produce pleasures and energy. Aber was ist nun die Bedeutung des Skateboardfahrens in den Innenstädten? Was ist nun die Bedeutung, wenn Skateboarder mit ihren Körpern Dinge ausdrücken? Was sagen Sie uns? Next slide, um, and I think there are a number of things implicit in what and really and most importantly, I think they suggest that the purpose of urban space is for human use rather than for commodity exchange. The first one is that architecture is not just grand buildings produced by architects. In short, that we should be able to use and find pleasure in cities without having to pay always to do so. So for a skateboarder, this simple brick bank which we see here is fabulous architecture. So for a skateboarder, is this gemauerte ja, diese Mauer, if we think about the wealth of cities, skateboarding suggests that this wealth should be thought of as social wealth There's rather also than as ownership. Of what we do in our lives. The idea that we should produce things is replaced in skateboarding with the idea that they suggest that all people, not just energy. Um, those who are older, who are engaged in work or in shopping, all people have equal rights to the city. Die Vorstellung, dass wir Dinge produzieren sollen, wird ersetzt durch die Vorstellung, dass wir Handlungen oder Energie produzieren müssen. And really, and most importantly, Next I think they suggest that the purpose of urban space is for human use rather than yep. commodity. Um, the skateboarding also suggests that places are composed of different times and speeds as well as quantities of space. In short, that we should be able to use and find pleasure in cities without having to pay. So this skateboarder in Dusseldorf is adding a new time, a new space, a new body rhythm to city streets. Exactly. So, uh, next if we think about the wealth of cities, they also, skateboarding also suggests that architecture doesn't tell us who we are, but is a um, urban entity that we think of ourselves in relation to. They suggest that all people, not just um, those who are older, who are engaged in work or in shopping, all people have equal rights to the city. And they say that all people, Alte Menschen und nicht nur die Menschen, die einkaufen, die gleiche Rechte right. an der Stadt haben. Um, however, we know that there are, of course, social responses to this kind of skateboarding. Yep. Yep. Um, so, despite its lack, I think, of any real criminal activity, skateboarding has become increasingly repressed and legislated against. Skateboarder schlagen auch vor, dass ähm, Orte aus unterschiedlichen Zeiten und Geschwindigkeiten bestehen. So this skateboarder in Düsseldorf is adding a new time, a new space, a new body rhythm to city. And here we see so some uh, rather older skateboarders getting a, a fine for skateboarding in California. Eine neue neuen uh, Zeit, eine neue Qualität des Raumes zu diesem Raum hinzu. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Also, skateboarding also suggests that and of course we're used to seeing devices like these to stop skateboarding a, in cities, um, um, such as these bench dividers in London. In to. Uh, skateboarder sagen auch, dass uns die Architektur nicht vorschreibt, was wir sind. So these vertical elements were added on to this bench, um, partly to stop skateboarders uh, and also to stop the homeless from lying down and going to sleep. Next slide, please. Um, however, we know that there are, of 
structural social responses uh, to this slide, kind of skateboarding. And then, of course, we're used to seeing these kinds of skate stopper devices in cities and public spaces all over the so world. So despite its lack, I think, of any real criminal activity, skateboarding has become increasingly repressed and legislated against. Um. Obwohl es an wirklich uh, yes, yeah. Aktivität mangelt, wird Skateboardfahren And conversely, these laws just add to the anarchic character of skateboarding. Um, part of its continual uh, struggle against And here we see city. some uh, rather older skateboarders getting a, a fine for skateboarding in California. Und hier sehen wir ein paar ältere Skateboarder, die gerade eine Strafe bekommen für Skateboardfahren in Kalifornien. This is a famous Next slide, and still popular um, sticker or slogan yeah, again in California that says skate like and destroy in a kind of gangland writing um, style. Such as these bench dividers in London. Und wir kennen natürlich alle diese wunderbaren Anlagen, wie diese, die Skateboardfahren verhindern sollen, wie diese Banktrenner in London. So these vertical elements were added on to this bench, Next um, slide, partly Thank to you. stop skateboarders. Okay, then, what, what do we make of this study of skateboarding? Where, where does it leave our understanding of cities and architecture in general? Um, firstly, next slide, please. And then, of course, we're used to seeing these kind of skate stops. What it suggests is that cities do not always have to be places of consumption and genteel shopping. Um, like in this shopping mall food court. Next slide. Uh, yes, please, yeah. And conversely, these laws just add to the anarchic character of skateboarding. Next slide, please. Um, part of its continual... Uh, uh, cities don't always have to be like an art gallery. Im Gegensatz erhöhen diese Gesetze natürlich noch den anarchischen Charakter des Skateboardsfahrens. Well, they don't always have to be about um, drinking a mocha frappuccino in a New York uh, pocket park. This is a famous and still popular um, sticker or slogan, again from California, that says skate and destroy in a kind of gangland writing style. This is a bekannter sticker from California, which is still there, that says skate and destroy in a kind of gangland writing style. But that cities can instead be all of the disparate activities that people do in cities. Next slide, thank you. Okay, then what? So, as well as art and coffee, they can be about shouting, loud music, sex, running, demonstrations, or all kinds of um, boisterous activities. Uh, firstly, next slide, please. So next. Um, what it suggests is that cities do not always have to be places so there are cities of, of intensity, of noise, um, like in this shopping mall food court. Zunächst muss man sagen, dass Städte nicht immer nur Plätze von Einkaufen und they are cities of taxi ranks, of second-hand sales, of railway arches, of things that we don't really quite understand or know what they are. Uh, cities don't always have to be like an art gallery. Städte müssen nicht immer sein wie eine Kunstgalerie. Next one. And well, they, they can be, um, be about cities of unusual um, art installations. Yeah, next slide, please. In a New York uh, pocket park. Oder sie müssen auch nicht sein, so etwas sein, wo man einen, 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 uh, einen Kaffee in einer... <lacht> they can be cities of Yorker, seclusion, uh, uh, intellectualism, Light. quiet contemplation. Um, This is the British Library Yorker. in London. But the cities can instead be all of the disparate activities that people do in cities. Sie können zusammen, Städte können zusammengesetzt sein aus all den unterschiedlichen um, Aktivitäten, die Menschen in Städten verrichten. Opposition. Neben Kunst und Café können die Städte eben auch Städte des Schreins, der lauten Musik, des Sexes, der Demonstrationen uh, next slide, oder aller Arten unterschiedlicher Aktionen sein. So what skateboarding and all the different things that people do in cities when they actually get up and do something 
sind also Städte der Intensität, des, des Lärms. Uh, next slide, please. What all these practices tell us is that beyond the homogeneity of the shopping mall and large public squares, we need to celebrate four different things. Das sind die Städte der Taxistände, der Flohmärkte, der Eisenbahnunterführung, eben der Dinge, die wir gar nicht so richtig kennen oder gar nicht so richtig identifizieren. And those things are different peoples, different spaces, different times, different ways of knowing the city. Ungewöhnlichen Kunstinstallationen, Kunstinstallationen. Uh, ja. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So we need to celebrate the people of different Fenty, backgrounds, of different of races, ages, classes, uh, sexuality and gender. Contemplation. This is the British Library in London. Das sind die Städte der äh, noch nicht gleichen Einsamkeit, der, des kristallklaren Intellekts und des stillen Nachdenkens, wie eben hier in der britischen Bibliothek. In All these people have different uh, ideas of public life. space and make their own they identities as individuals and citizens accordingly. Die Städte der seltsamen Gegensätze. Uh, next slide. And they can be cities of ephemeral architectural manipulations. Oder Städte der vergänglichen himmlischen architektonischen Manipulationen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. And therefore we need so different kinds of spaces. There is no such thing as public space, only different public spaces, plural. Was also Skateboard fahren und all die unterschiedlichen Dinge von Menschen sind, wenn sie denn nun etwas machen, we need, we do need shopping malls, we do need public squares, but we also need hidden spaces and exposed, exposed spaces, rough spaces and smooth spaces. And those things are different peoples, different spaces. We need spaces which are loud and silent, exciting and calm. Unterschiedliche Menschen, unterschiedliche Räume, unterschiedliche Zeiten und unterschiedliche Arten, ah, die Stadt okay, zu kennen. Good. Um, next, uh, 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 next slide, please. please. So Thirdly, really different times. We need times that are slow and times that are fast, times that are linear and times that are cyclical. Wir müssen bedeutet also, dass wir die unterschiedlichen Hintergründe der Menschen, ihre unterschiedlichen ähm, Herkünfte, Alter, Klassen und Sexual Sexual different times also help make different spaces people and different, have different people. Different ideas of public space and make their own identities as individuals and citizens uh, accordingly. Next slide, please. All these people have different ways of knowing And finally, we need different ways of knowing cities. Identities. Und nutzen diesen und schaffen ihre eigenen Plätze, um ihre eigenen Plätze zu schaffen. We need spaces where we encounter sameness and otherness. Uh, next slide, please. And therefore we need, we need a city which we do know, but which we also do not know, which is familiar to us, but is also strange to us. Und deshalb gibt es keine Sache, gibt es keinen öffentlichen Raum, sondern nur öffentliche Räume im Plural. We need, uh, we do time. need shopping malls, we do need public um, Last image. And therefore we need practices like skateboarding, whether we're skateboarders or not. But we also need hidden spaces and expo exposed spaces, rough spaces and smooth spaces. Skateboarding adds another unusual, exciting activity which adds to the richness and um, uncertainty in the city spaces. Genau. Also, I just translated it. Ah, okay. I read it out from your... um, next, uh, uh, next image, please. Thirdly, different times. We need times that are slow and times that are fast. Times that are linear and times that are... And that's my last image. Thank you very much. Wir brauchen unterschiedliche Zeiten. Wir brauchen Zeiten, die schnell sind und Zeiten, die langsam sind. Wir brauchen Zeiten, die gerade verlaufen und Zeiten, die eben in Zyklen verlaufen. Different times also help make different spaces and different people. Unterschiedliche Zeichen, Zeiten helfen uns, unterschiedliche Räume und unterschiedliche Menschen zu machen. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, we need ah, different see ways you. Hello. of knowing <laughs> cities. Und natürlich brauchen wir unterschiedliche Arten, Städte zu kennen. We need spaces where we encounter sameness 
and openness. Wir brauchen Plätze, in denen wir Gleichheit, aber auch Andersartigkeit treffen. We need a city which we do know, but which we also do not know, which is familiar to us, but is also strange to us. Wir brauchen Städte, die wir kennen, aber die wir auch nicht kennen, die, sich, die wir gleichzeitig bekannt ist, aber auch unbekannt ist. Uh, next slide. And last image. And therefore we need practices like skateboarding, whether we're skateboarders or not. Und deshalb brauchen wir eben Praktiken wie Skateboard fahren, ob wir nun Skateboardfahrer sind oder eben nicht. Skateboarding adds another unusual, exciting activity, which adds to the richness and um, uncertainty of city spaces. Um, Skateboarden uh, ist eben eine Aktivität, die wieder uh, Skateboarden ist wieder eine Aktivität, die eben diese Unbekanntheit und die Kraft zum urbanen Leben hinzufügt. And that's my last image. Thank you very much. Und das ist das letzte Bild und vielen Dank. Okay, um, we thought you may have, you may want to ask some questions. So. Ah, I can see you. Hello. <laughs> no, I, I can hardly hear anything. It's um, um, it's so it, 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 it's uh, very um, distorted. Uh, notepads here across the room. We can hand them out, and as you go, you as you are here, you can just write down some questions, and uh, Matthias will say it in German. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, skateboarding is is like any other movement through through cities. It, it through its movement, it, it it creates an appropriation and a difference to cities. Um, and in many ways, particularly when people walk and they do anything from going for a Sunday walk to a psychogeographic degree, they are certainly um, appropriating city spaces. Direct gets to. Yeah, and we've got the first question there. Stand up. Yeah, he can see you. I've, I've put you into the middle of the camera. Just speak to the camera here and you'll... But Yeah, I think I think that in a way skateboarding is just a more extreme version of anyone who moves through city spaces. Certainly, I think urban cycling has a lot of the qualities that skateboarding does. Um, but. Well, I think the, the main difference is skateboarders focus on, on architecture, on buildings. I don't know of any other group of people who are as obsessed with buildings and architecture as skateboarders. And most of their activity is directly framed in relation to specific buildings or benches no, or parks I can hardly or hear anything. other it's, physical um, elements it's, it's, of the city. It, it, it's uh, very um, distorted. I'll put you to the... Uh, so the question was, um, if there is a question, if there is a difference between the skater and the walker, as not yeah. necessarily all walkers. So I think I think walking shopping, can be like skateboarding, but 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 it, but it normally is space. isn't as extreme as that. Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, skateboarding is is like any other movement through through cities. It, it, through its movement, it, it, it creates an appropriation and a difference okay. to cities. Um, and in many ways, what, particularly when people walk and they do anything from going for a Sunday walk to a psychogeographic dream, they are certainly um, appropriating city spaces. Okay, I heard that one. Um, I, I started skateboarding in, oh god, you're going to find out how old I am now. Um, I started skateboarding in 1978 when I was 16 years old. No, 77 when I was 15 years old. 
But so, um, but uh, and I started yeah. off skateboarding I think the, in. In a way, cars. skateboarding is just a more extreme version and of I anyone guess who what moves my feelings to city spaces. Certainly, I think my, my, my feelings were, were not of the political. political. They were though. they were all about the pleasures and the enjoyment of riding up transitions and of riding up um, uh, these amazing new skate park constructions. Um, but. But well, I think that the changed main quite a lot in the 1990s when I started started uh, skateboarding, skateboarding street skateboarding in Los Angeles. I was in LA at the end of the 1980s and early 90s. And most of their um, and my interest in oil affairs came to the fore also at that time. I was studying at UCLA in Los Angeles. So at that point, I got a kind of a mixture of the, the political and the theoretical and the experiential of skateboarding. Um, nowadays, my, I, I've, I've gone back to skate. I don't skate street anymore. I just skate on banks. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a lot older than most of you in the room, I think. And I don't count as I used to. So um, I'm much more of a gentle skateboarder these days. So la kann laufen sein wie Skateboard fahren, aber es ist normalerweise nicht zu extrem. Yeah, I think we got some questions coming around. Actually. Okay. There's, there's another one. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty personal one. So, um, when did you personally start skating, and how did you feel during your um, youth, and how did you feel in the city? And Okay, I heard that one. So, um, has anyone ever created I, I a road for skateboarding? In, uh, so you're going to find out how old I am now. Um, yeah. I started skateboarding um, in 1978. I mean, the closest thing I can think it gets no, to is, 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 is when people share ago. pavements or so, roads. Um, no one's uh, ever actually created a specific road parks. for skateboarding or for scooters or for um, um, or for I those kinds of transport. Um, skateboarders, I think, are used to sharing no, their surfaces with pedestrians and were, with, uh, um, with cyclists. I, um, I think the problem really is not so much for skaters, um, whether they want uh, to share their space, but whether other people want to share their sidewalk or their pavement with skateboarders. But that changed quite a lot in the 1990s when I started to start uh, skateboarding street skateboarding in Los Angeles. I was in LA at the end of the 1980s and early 90s. Um, and my interest in oil affairs came to the fore also at that time. I was studying at UCLA in Los Angeles. So at that point I got a kind of a mixture of the, the political and the theoretical and the experiential of skateboarding. Um, Nowadays, my I, I, I've gone back to skate. I don't skate street anymore, and I just skate on banks. I, I'm, I'm I'm quite a lot older than most of you in the room, I think, and I don't bounce as well as I used to. So um, I, I'm much more of a gentle skateboarder these days. Okay, I think we got the first questions. Um, um, so skateboarding is a very fast form of movement. Should it be possible to create a road for people who move from their own body, uh, not only spaces like urban spaces, oh, but brilliant. also ways? Where, where, whereabouts? I'd be interested Just in that. Where is it? About that. So has anyone ever created a road for skateboarding? Yeah. Is that yeah. the question? There's the, um, the famous Venice boardwalk yeah. in the um, Venice area of Los Angeles, which I mean, the um, like has a lot of people in line skating is, is and skateboarding, on, but also cyclists roads. and, and, no and ever people running as well. A specific road for skateboarding or for scooters or for, um, or for those kinds of transport. Um, skateboarders, I think, are used to sharing their services with pedestrians and with uh, um, with cyclists. I, um, I think the problem really is not so much for skaters whether they want to share their space but whether other people want to share their sidewalk or their pavement with skateboarders. Any more questions we have? Ah, jetzt, uh, achso, jetzt habe ich natürlich vergessen zu übersetzen. Ja, also um, ah. im Prinzip yeah. Are skateboarders allowed on the cycling lanes in Freiburg? Es gibt natürlich Fahrradwege und und Fußgängerwege, Gehwege. Und das Problem ist, sie sind eher dabei, 
oder sagt jetzt die Frage, ob, ob, ob nicht ob die Skateboarder ihren Platz, ja, so, so einen Weg quasi ja. anderen teilen würden, sondern ob eben die Bereitschaft da ist, von, von den Menschen, die zum Beispiel Fahrrad fahren oder, oder, oder zu Fuß unterwegs sind, ihren Platz mit den Skateboardern zu teilen. Also das kann man ja auch beispielhaft sagen. Also es ist immer schwierig, äh, ja. war ich als Skateboarder auf dem Fahrradweg oder auf dem Gehweg. Haben will mich da keiner und auf der Straße eigentlich auch nicht. Also wenn man ist zu schnell, man ist schneller als die Fußgänger, langsamer als die Fahrradfahrer. Ähm, und ich glaube, so, ein, so, so ein gewisses Spannungsverhältnis lässt sich da nicht machen. Aber man kann natürlich nicht für alles extra, also ich glaube, das hat noch keiner gemacht, wirklich einen abgesperrten Straßenstreifen für Skateboarder. In Kalifornien gibt es für Inlandfahrer und da fahren halt auch Skater, aber die Kampf für Inlandfahrer. So in Kalifornien, apparently, they have something specially for Inliner. Ja, really. Whereabouts? I'd be interested in that. Where is it? I'm not sure. No, I don't. I, I've never known skaters yeah. to get the, bored um, of, um, of, a, of a good skateboard Angeles, spot. Maybe, which, maybe people um, there know people differently in, in their own experiences. But, on, um, but also no, normally the opposite and, takes and, place. And that that, that skateboarders well. like a space and they stay there, or they go there very often. But the longer they go there and the more often they go there, the more they attract the attention of building managers or urban managers and, and people then legislate against them or, or put skate stoppers down. But I, I don't know of skateboarders who've got bored of a, of a good skateboard spot. So a couple of Freiburg uh, on cycling roads, actually, some people have sprayed skateboards uh, illegally below the, the sign for, um, for cycling yeah. in Freiburg now. Um, yeah. so are skateboarders yeah. allowed on the cycling lanes in Freiburg? I think they it, are. It, even, the, like, even the skate parks yeah. that were built in the, in the 1970s, there, uh, no there are quite a few of those that still like exist and are still very, very popular with skateboarders skateboard today. In, in Germany, as far as I know. Yeah. So we're kind of in between, which is pretty good because they can. Like you can I, I, I skateboard in two different skate parks in London, and they they were both built in uh, 1978. Crime by, by, by not using the bar too often. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's another question from the audience. Okay. Uh huh. So is it known or possible that one space is sort of um, run down by skaters yeah. or used up by skaters in a sense that the, the edges have become too smooth, too round, and that people go, uh, go skating to another place because it has lost its attra attractivity? No, I don't. I, I've never known skaters to get board of um, Do you want me to respond to that? Yeah. Good skateboard yeah. spot. Maybe um, maybe people there know. Skate park design is really really difficult because but, um, on one level no, it's incredibly technical. That, that you actually do need to know what they're doing, there, and there are lots of skate parks that have been pretty poorly go, designed and built because they haven't used building managers uh, experts. Or urban managers and, and, um, and I think you do need people that know quite simple things about what kind of concrete to use, what kind of coping to use, what kind of materials to use, what kind of transitions work, and what kind of elements flow into, into others. Wenn du einen guten Platz, zumindest ist eher der Unterschied, dass dann, wenn der Platz sehr attraktiv wird, weil viele Leute darauf skaten, dann eben die Hausmeister oder die Stadtplaner kommen und versuchen, die Skater von dort zu vertreiben mit entsprechenden Maßnahmen. But the, 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 the best even skate parks the, today, skate I think, are ones that are designed the, by people who are professional designers, there are quite but are also skateboarders. Still exist and are still so very they know what is good technically, but they also know what is good from the experience and, and um, uh, perspective of a skateboarder. I, I skateboard in two different skate parks in London, and they, they were both built in 1978. So, I skate selbst in two skate parks, the um, so, so, you know, really good skate 
parks, I think, are I ones that question. don't try and uh, have when, very fixed when uses. They're ones that allow to lots of different uses and basically build, try and, uh, in a way, replicate what a, a good what urban street spot does, which is have lots of possibilities for skateboarding, um, rather than something which uh, is uh, perhaps um, overtly spectacular. Yeah. Councillor yeah. Keller is, uh, is approvingly uh, making gestures on the far end of the, of the room. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can just... Do you want me to respond to yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Um, Skate park design is really, really difficult because on one level it's incredibly technical. You actually do need to know what you're doing. And there are lots of skate parks that have been pretty poorly For me it's a leisure well, time I do it two, two, two times. I do it as a leisure uh, time experts. activity because I go skateboarding um, early on a Sunday morning. I, I skateboard in a, particularly skateboard in a London skate park use, called Stockwell, kind of which is use, quite kind of old materials to use, and what gets kind of very, very crowded by um, what kind uh, of skateboarding and BMX riders and sometimes inliners as well. So given that I'm quite a lot older than a lot of those skateboarders. I go at about seven o'clock or eight o'clock on a Sunday morning. So um, that's one. That's one time when I go skateboarding. And the other is well, when I go and pick up my six-year-old son from school. So I skateboard down. I have a longboard, and I skate to his school on my longboard and um, and pick him up that way. So they know what is good technically, but they also know what is good from the experience and, and um, uh, perspective of a skateboarder. So, die guten Skateparks heute ähm, sind alle von Leuten gebaut, die das Stop professionell up. machen und die eben gleichzeitig Skater sind und Bauprofis und die auch technisches Wissen haben. Um, so, well, I, I don't go to the shopping really mall on the skateboard. Parks, Most of the shopping malls in the UK, you're not allowed into the shopping mall, even if you're carrying a skateboard. allow lots of different uses and basically try and in a way replicate what a, a good urban street spot does, which is have lots of possibilities for skateboarding, um, rather than something which uh, is uh, perhaps um, overtly spectacular. So die guten Skateplätze sind eben die, die möglichst viele Möglichkeiten bieten und auf diese Art und Weise den äh, urbanen Raum der urbanen Streetspots nachbilden und die nicht auf eine Nutzung sich festlegen. Are there any more questions in the room? Mm -hmm. so, so the question is, do you go skating when you're going uh -huh. shopping, for example? Or do you only do that when you are uh, a, as a leisure time activity? Absolutely. For me, it's a le well, I do it, I do it two, two, two times. I do it as a leisure time activity because I go skateboarding early on a Sunday morning. I, I skateboard in a particularly skateboard in a London skate park. I'll ask a question. Can I ask a which question? Is quite old. How many of you are skateboarders? Can I can I have a raise of hands, please? Um, How many of you are skateboarders? Uh, skateboarding and BMX riders and uh, um, uh, um, good. Uh, sometimes it, I can see that. Okay, well. quite good. So How many of you um, have older, been uh, a skateboard on like in, in the streets in the streets of Friday morning? So um, that's one. That's one time when I go skateboarding. Yeah, not so many. Okay. And the other is when I go and pick up my six-year-old son from school. So I skateboard down. It's always good to know how many people are, are, um, school are, are, are out and, street, um, um, skateboarding and in, in the streets. Um, ja, Zeiten, denen ich Skateboard fahren gehe. Einmal früh am Samstag oder Sonntagmorgen, so gegen 7 Uhr in einem Skatepark in London, äh, Stock, Stockno, Stockwell. Stockwell. Und einmal, immer wenn ich meinen sechs Jahre alten Sohn von der Schule abhole, fahre ich mit meinem Longboard dahin und hole ihn ab. Okay. Ja. Well, I, I don't go to the shopping mall on a skateboard. Most of the shopping malls in the UK, you're not allowed into the shopping mall, even if you're carrying a skateboard. So die meisten Einkaufszentren im äh, Vereinigten Königreich erlauben es nicht, dass man sein Skateboard mitnimmt ins Einkaufszentrum, nicht mal, wenn man es trägt. Von daher mache ich das nicht. Ja. Mhm. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, gibt es noch weitere Fragen? Ja. Und auch auf Deutsch gerne, ich kann gerne auch übersetzen. Möglicherweise von da hinten, von dem, because we got a, uh, we got a university seminar on, uh, urban, uh, on urban space in British contemporary fiction yeah. here from the university. And mm -hmm. as I'm speaking, they are digging, they are going deeper and deeper into their seats because they seem that I'm trying to stimulate them to ask a question. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's an experience you may know from, uh, from the university yourself. So absolutely. I, I absolutely want to encourage you to ask questions. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a really good way to actually provide facilities for skateboarding. I get, I mean, I like skate parks, I really enjoy them, that's where I do most of my, my skateboarding, but I, I get quite worried when municipal authorities try and keep skateboarders in a kind of um, enclave or in a separate part of the city. And very often they make that okay. separate part of the city right on the outskirts. You know, they stick it in some warehouse um, in, in the miles the away from the city right. centre. And I think it's really important that skateboarding takes place in the middle yeah, of the city right. because okay. skateboarders are urban citizens like everyone else and they should be allowed to be themselves in, good to in amongst other people. people. Are, um, are, are, are out street, um, skateboarding in, in um, the streets. Um, Just have to put back the camera. Yeah. Um, just to give maybe to give the, the uh, a little bit of time for thinking of some questions to the people from the university. Well, why was um, this scheme in Munich I, closed down? I, I what what were the concerns answer. or what were the problems uh, in, with in, it? In Munich, in, 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 here in Germany, um, there was a project. Um, the uh, a skater designed a, like a public space. It's called the Schwanthaler Höhe, and it was um, just a, a, basically a public park. But, but there were curves and ledges with, with, with metal edges on them. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was an, an, an urban space, yeah. a skate park, but like designed to be skated. Yeah. And yeah. I think like maybe it, that's something you, you, you see more often. You, 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 you told us about the yeah. integration of urban obstacles into. Into a skate park and like to, to, to build a skate park in a city that will like not look like a typical skate park. Um, yeah. But they shut that down because of complaints of, of people that live there or less people that live there. And um, what, what, what yeah. do you think? Is, is that a thing for the future to, yeah. to, to like not build skate parks as separated, separated spaces and not to have like just the city being skated but to? Put something up in the city that yeah. is skatable, but not like obviously made for skating. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good way to actually provide facilities for skateboarding. I get, yeah. I mean, I like skate yeah. parks, so I really enjoy them. That's where I do most of my my skateboarding. But I, I think, I get quite I think one of the problems with skateboarding is because it tends to be young men who skateboard, and sk young men are often demonised in, in society. Of, so people um, think that wherever you're going to get young way, men, you're going to get crime or drugs taking, or mugging, or robbery, or litter, or something like that. It's just not. It's just not. I just think it's just not the case. But I must admit, the thing I do have some sympathy with is the problem of noise. In the middle I think there's the no escaping the fact that skateboarding, that skateboarding is a noisy like activity. Else, and and should be allowed you know, quite frankly, it's quite an annoying noise. In, it's quite an irritable, irritable noise. And I can understand how so people uh, get you know, um, tired of hearing the, 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 the kind of bangs and crashes and scrapes yeah. that, that, that skateboarding makes. And I think that is one of the biggest problems facing skateboarding at the moment in city centres is, is the noise it makes. Why was this scheme in Munich closed down? What what were the concerns or what were the problems with it? Why was this in Munich closed down? Well, there were problems with Anwohnern. First, because of Lärm, so I don't know. There were also things like Müll. And in the end, there were then first Zeiten eingerichtet, to which the money was given. But after that, it was then completely closed. And so I think the complaint of, of people that live there, I guess it wasn't that many people, um, was at first about the noise production, yeah. um, which was, which they tried to solve by um, 
having uh, times to scale, mm -hmm. like in between. Yeah. Uh, you know, Germans are very um, strict about their like yeah. quiet times. So, <laughs> so from I guess three in the afternoon till eight in the, in the evening or something that you were allowed to skate, and in the like in the morning from I don't know like nine or ten to, to twelve. Yeah. It's usual like working times in, in, in Germany. And um, well, that was a one of the advantages of concrete like, skate parks is they're a lot uh, they're a lot the problem, quieter like, uh, than the um, metal or wooden ones. Also, were so actually, I think one of the advantages of getting a uh, and I think the, the, the I think the scheme you showed me this morning was a was a was a was a concrete park. So I think you know one of the things yeah. that can you can do is building concrete, and that can make things a lot better. Um, I think, I think the other one is, one is sometimes people do what uh, uh, we just heard about, which is to try and, and uh, um, control the, the, the timing. And um, some of the parks I know in America have done this by having floodlights, but which the floodlights go off at night. So they're only on for the early part of the evening, so they allow an early evening skateboarding, but not but not into the you know all the way through into the night time. So that's one way they try and mitigate. And, you know, um, and practice, sometimes people have even put chains across uh, uh, skate parks and across the ramps and at I different times, so you can't get, skate them there. You know, um, that's something else that I know people have done. There's a skate park in Oxford great in the UK that, 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 that does that. I think, that I think a lot of it has to do with um, uh, that people are often fearful of um, the unknown, and I think people associate often associate skateboarders with, as I say, with being somehow unruly or disorderly but actually they're, they're not and if skaters meet and talk to local residents that can often help uh, assuage or reduce the fears in advance. There's a, there's a park, skateboard park, um, relatively near to where I live, where the local residents were really opposed to the skateboard park until they met some of the skateboarders and realised that actually they were quite nice people and um, it didn't remove all the opposition but it, it, it got rid of quite a bit of it. anyone from the gardens and parks office sitting right now here because those are the people we are working with in planning skateboard parks mm -hmm. but we already know that for one proposed site I talked to you this morning when you did the technical yeah. preparations um, that there are already complaints from people living in the area about possible noise and trash um, and um, so do you know of any good strategies to um, or ways of um, to to counter these concerns well one of the advantages of concrete skate parks is they're a lot they're a lot quieter than um, metal or wooden ones. So actually, I think one of the advantages of getting a uh, and I think the, the I think the scheme you showed me this morning was a was a was a was a concrete park. Yes. So I think you know one of the things that can you can do is building concrete, and that can make things a lot better. Um, I think the other one is is sometimes people do what uh, um, we just heard about, which is try and uh, um, control them, the, the, the timing. And um, some of the parks I know in America have done this by having floodlights, but which the floodlights go off um, at night. So oh, they're, you know, they're only on for the early part of the evening, so they allow an early evening skateboarding, but not, but not into the, you know, all the way through into the night time. So that's one way they try and mitigate it. Um, and sometimes people have even put chains across the uh, uh, skate parks and across the ramps at different times so that you can't skate them then. Um, that's something else that I know people have done. There's a skate park in Oxford in the UK that, that, that does that. But I think a lot of it has to do with um, uh, that, that people are often fearful of um, the unknown. And I think people associate, often associate skateboarders with, as I say, with being somehow unruly or disorderly. But actually, they're, they're not. And if skaters meet and talk to local residents, that can often help uh, assuage or reduce the fears in advance. There's a, there's a park, skateboard park, um, relatively near to where I live, where the local residents were really opposed to the skateboard park until they met some of the skateboarders and realised that actually they were quite nice people and um, 
it didn't remove all the opposition, but it, it, it got rid of quite a bit of it. So, the Frage war, was gibt's für Strategien, um, uh, um mit den Problemen beim Skateboardfahren umzugehen oder um, uh, um das beim Bauen zu beheben? Und da ist schon mal der erste, äh, der erste Hinweis, dass Betonparks deutlich leiser sind als Metall- und Holzparks. Ja. Und dass es dann natürlich Beispiele gibt, in denen man die Zeiten kontrolliert, in denen man etwa Beleuchtung ja. Ja. Äh, natürlich um, später. I, I don't think skateboard ja. parks are a replacement ja. or a substitute for street skating. Um, they are, I think, an addition to uh, the possibilities of skateboarding. So it, it, sometimes I think urban managers ask if we build a skate park, will we get rid of our skateboarding um, problem that we've got somewhere else? And the answer to that is no, it won't replace it, nor should it. You know, skate parks are an addition to skateboarding, not a re replacement for street skating. There's a there's a city in in the UK called Milton Keynes, which is um, a very modernist new city, first built in the 1970s, and it had a lot of skateboarders actually going into its shopping mall in the centre of Milton Keynes. And what they did was quite clever. What they did was they built a lot of skateboard, not parks, but actually a bit like we were hearing about was built in Munich, places that skaters could skate um, away from the the shopping mall that didn't look like they'd been provided as skateboard facilities. They weren't skateboard parks. They were slopes or benches or um, skatable elements that they put somewhere else. And they didn't entirely remove skateboarders from the shopping mall, but they kind of encouraged them to go somewhere else. And it, it worked really well, and the skaters liked it, and it's 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 been pretty pretty popular by I think most of the people who live in Milton Keynes, whether they're skateboarders or not. Or not deeply understood what all these movements and things are about, or what is all lying beneath it. And the question is, um, if you got uh, a skate park in the city, does it make uh, street street skating? Um, do people still need to do street skating? And is um, skating in a skate park not more sports and speed skating not something more um, a sub, um, uh, subversive where you yeah. take your space and um, you do something to the city and appropriate it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't think skateboard parks are a replacement or a substitute for street skating. Um, they are, I think, an addition to uh, the possibilities of skateboarding. So <laughs> it, it, sometimes I think urban managers ask, if we build a skate park, will we get rid of our skateboarding um, problem that we've got somewhere else? And the answer to that is, no, it won't replace it, nor should it. Um, you know, skate parks are an addition well, to skateboarding, not a re no, replacement. I mean, re there's skating. been roller skating, which has been around there's since the 1910s and 1920s. Um, skateboarding first started actually as a kind of uh, simple scooter-like device in the night by kids in the 1950s. Um, there have obviously been lots of kind of urban street-based activity where people have appropriated cities. Streets, there's a, but there's no, a city I don't think there's anything in, in that's the UK quite as Milton Keynes, um, which is explicitly a, a very mobile new city as skateboarding in as, a, as an activity in, in um, city streets today. And it's been going now for just over 50 years. So um, what I think they it's did here to quite stay. clever. What they did was they built a lot of skateboard, not parks, but actually a bit like we were hearing about the stores in Munich. 
places that well, surfing surfing's the obvious skates. one. I mean, surfing, um, the, the first skateboarders were surfers. They were people who, like you know, wanted something to do when, the, um, the, um, when the surf they was flat. And they looked at they what their younger brothers were doing on these little kind of scooters and thought, well, you know, we could make that into something a bit like surfing. And they didn't entirely... The interesting thing about surfing is, of course, it started off as a... But they kind of encouraged them to go somewhere else. I want to say as a non-urban activity. It and, and it's, it's actually been fed been back, skateboarding is fed back into surfing. So a lot of the slightly more aggressive attitudes that you get in, in, in skateboarding, you now so see in surfing. Like and I think what you see in snowboarding is actually a kind of an urbanisation of the mountain, that you see urban culture going out into the mountainside, out onto the snow slopes, and um, producing a very different kind of cultural engagement with the mountain, very different to the way that ski beforehand. Dass es attraktiver ist, außerhalb zu skaten, dass man nicht so viel im, äh, in diesem Zentrum bleibt und dass es sich dadurch auch ähm, reduziert, das Skaten da. Aber eben nicht sie zu vertreiben oder zu verbieten. Okay, jetzt kommen wir jetzt. Um, so, are there any more questions? Gibt es noch Fragen? So the university students haven't asked anything. So the, the question was, is there a predecessor to the skateboard? And I'll take you afterwards. Um, it, well, no. I mean, there's been roller skating, the, um, which has the, been the around since the 1910s and 1920s. The first snowboards were invented by skateboard manufacturers um, like Sims or Hobie um, in the late 70s and early 1980s. Like Snowboarding is essentially an invention by, by kids in the um, skateboarders and um, skateboard manufacturers. There have actually been lots of kind of urban street-based activity where people have appropriated city streets. But no, I don't think there's anything that's quite as... Um, explicitly mobile as skateboarding as, a, as an activity in, in city streets today. I and mean, it's been going now for just over 50 years. So um, I think it's here to stay. Also, um, snowboarding? Snowboarding or surfing? Well, surfing is the obvious one. I mean, surfing, the first skateboarders were surfers. They were people who, you know, wanted something to do when the um, when the surf was flat, and they looked at what their younger brothers were doing. I mean, people do people, people do commute for, with skateboarding, and I guess you know one of the ways I use a skateboard is as a way of quickly um, getting down to my son's school. You know, surfing, I can do it in five minutes rather than fifteen minutes. A, so. Um, um, uh, but I want to say the non-urban uh, activity. Uh, they're not. They're not and such good forms of urban transportation. Um, you know, a bicycle is a, is a better so way of getting from one side of a, of a, of a town in, to another in, in for all kinds of different reasons. Yeah, yeah, I mean, some people do do, I mean, do use them that way, but um, I don't really see the skateboard as becoming a form of urban transportation. I think if it if it if it if it was going to do that, it would have done that by now. Producing a very different. Was your question saying, asking, very asking whether the cities are becoming more friendly towards skateboarding? Yeah, I, no is the answer. I mean, I don't know what it's like in Germany, but I, I, basically I think cities are generally becoming profoundly unfriendly towards skateboarding. Um, that they're actually, most many cities in America, in the UK and elsewhere around the world are becoming increasingly um, belligerent and aggressive against skateboarding, which I find absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, one of the things that, 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 that people always go on about is that they, you know, they, they, they think that young men should stop watching uh, porn on the internet, they should stop playing video games, they should get off their backsides and go outside and do something, you know, kind of energetic and uh, that doesn't involve taking drugs or anything unhealthy. And it seems to me that skateboarding is the ideal kind of activity, actually for, and it, you know, to be kind of liberal rather than um, uh, um, uh, kind of liberal politics about this, it's the ideal training to be an urban citizen, that you go out into the city, you um, make new friends, you negotiate with your 
your fellow citizens, citizens about publicly, how you use public um, space. The, you have to use your own initiative to um, use spaces. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, it's a pretty good way of learning and to become an urban citizen. And I find it absolutely absurd that it's exactly that activity that a lot of cities today are trying to exclude and are trying to commercialise it or to segregate skateboarding and stick it up in the outskirts somewhere. Which we finally got to ask a question. I mean, people do people do commute with skateboarding, and I guess you know one of the ways I use my skateboard is as a way of quickly getting down to my son's school. You know, if I can do it in five minutes rather than fifteen minutes. So, um, um, but uh, if they're not they're not such good forms of urban transportation. Um, you know, a bicycle is a, is a better way of getting from one side of a of a, of a town to another. For all kinds of different reasons. I mean, some people do 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 use them that way, but um, I don't really see the skateboarders becoming a uh, um, form of urban transportation. I think if it if it if it if it was going to do that, it would have done that by now. Uh, was your question saying ask, asking whether cities are becoming more friendly towards skateboarding? Yeah, I, no is the answer. I mean, I don't know what it's like in Germany, but I, I, basically I think cities are generally becoming profoundly unfriendly towards skateboarding. Um, but they're actually, tr most, many cities in America and the UK and elsewhere around the world are becoming increasingly um, belligerent and aggressive against skateboarding, which I find absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, one of the things that... that, that, that People always go on about is that they, you know, they they, they think that young men should stop watching uh, porn on the internet. They should stop playing video games. They should get off their backsides and go outside and do something, you know, kind of energetic and uh, that doesn't involve okay. taking drugs right. or anything. Well, thank you for the invitation. Thank you and for um, listening. And, but thanks the for the questions and the discussion. That was, that was really enjoyable. Thank you very and, much. You know, to be kind of liberal rather than a um, uh, um, uh, kind of liberal politics. That was. It's the idea of training to be an urban citizen. That you go out into the city, you um, make new friends, you negotiate with your fellow citizens about how you use public space, you how you use your own initiative to um, use spaces. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, it's a pretty good way of learning and to become an urban citizen. And I find it absolutely absurd that it's exactly that activity that a lot of cities today are trying to exclude and are trying to commercialise it or to segregate skateboarding and stick it up in the outskirts somewhere. So, dann mal zur Übersetzung dieses langen Beitrages. Die erste Frage, wird Skateboard fahren ähm, mehr zu einer Art äh, Fortbewegungsmittel, so wie es Fahrradfahren inzwischen geworden ist und keine Freizeitaktivität? Ähm, und er sagt ja, dass es naja, einigermaßen geht, aber ähm, dass natürlich Radl nach wie vor besser ist, als Fortbewegung von, von einem Ende der Stadt zum anderen zu bekommen, aber sicherlich im begrenzten Umfang. Wenn es zur Fortbewegungsaktivität geworden wäre, dann hätte es wahrscheinlich schon, wäre das schon passiert, wir werden das nicht sehen. Und die Nachfrage dann war dann, werden denn Städte skatefreundlicher oder nicht? Und da ist die ganz klare Antwort nein. Man sieht deutlich durch die ganze Welt, dass immer aggressiver gegen Skateboarder fahren vorgegangen wird und es eigentlich sehr absurd ist, weil man hier immer möchte, dass junge Männer aufhören sollen, irgendwie Pornos im Internet zu gucken und vor dem Computer rumzuhängen, sondern einfach mal ihren Arsch hochkriegen und keine Drogen nehmen und sich irgendwie betätigen, irgendwas mit Energie. Und da wäre ja Skateboardfahren eigentlich die optimale Sache, aber... Ähm, man würde ja da auch gut lernen, sich als urbaner Bürger zu verhalten, neue Freunde zu finden, den öffentlichen Raum zu verhandeln. Das ist auch nicht sehr teuer, aber ähm, es wird eben durch Städte immer zunehmend äh, zurückgedrängt und kommerzialisiert. Okay. Weitere Fragen oder Diskussionsbeiträge? Offensichtlich nicht.
So I think there are no more questions here in the room. Um, people are already wanting to leave, some of them on their skateboards, maybe. Um, in the winter. In deep winter. In winter. Skateboards with no, slides no, no, no. on it. Uh, so I thank you for your presentation tonight and for the wonderful insights you provided. And um, and, and there may be something we'll be sending you from the city. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for um, listening. And for, thanks for the questions and the discussion. That was, that was really enjoyable. Thank you very much. Yeah, goodbye then, and we'll goodbye. talk to you soon. Das muss ich gerade hier. Das ist ein guter Typ.